So we're gonna do facial proportions. Um, get your pencils out. Make sure you have an eraser handy. So first step, we're going to, and this is just, I'm showing you Canon today. That doesn't necessarily mean this is going to apply to everybody's faces because everybody's faces are different. Um, but I'm just gonna show you kind of the basics because we are gonna be revisiting facial proportions again in the second semester. Mm -hmm. Um, we only have literally four classes between now and finals week. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw kind of an egg shape here. An inverted egg shape. So an upside down egg. Okay. Now this is just a placeholder for our facial proportions. Okay. So we're doing kind of a generic face shape an upside down egg, okay? So do this now, please. Try your best. If it helps, you can create a circle, like this. And then loop it down from there. It doesn't have to be exact, again, it's just kind of a placeholder for all of our other proportions that are gonna go into this drawing. Okay. The next thing that I'm gonna do after I have my upside down egg shape is I'm going to divide it vertically in half. Just by using the little searching line here. And I'm gonna divide it vertically in half, horizontally, okay? Oh, okay. I'm gonna check my proportions, make sure I'm even. Yes. All right. I'm gonna get rid of this shape. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I erase it really dirty. Now, once I have a vertical line, horizontal line going across my upside down egg shape, right? Now, what's what's hard for some beginning artist is, is understanding that the eyes are proportionally in the middle of the face. Not up here, not here, but at the middle, okay? Because we have to count for a lot of stuff that's happening above, like the forehead, the hairline, the hair, right? So the first thing that we're gonna draw is we're gonna draw one eyeball or one eye. Okay. And that's going to be kind of like the ultimate measuring tool, proportion-wise, to everything else that's happening on the face. Okay? So we're going to draw our first eye. Okay? Now I'll just do a kind of a, a looping rainbow. Okay? Just like so. We're going to go down below. We're going to kind of pull in like that and then curve the opposite way and go and connect it here. Okay. We're going to draw a circle here. And that looks a little freaky. But we're gonna cover it up. So we're going to darken the bottom part of the circle. Just like so. Looks very scared right now. Don't worry. Won't look like this the entire time. Like, oh my gosh, my art grade's terrible right now. We're going to draw a eyelid that's going to cover up the top of that circle, okay? Just 
just like so. All right. We'll just erase that. See that? Boom. Now, this measurement from here to here, the space between the two eyes, the space between the two different eyes is going to be the same distance as one eyeball. So this proportion here, the space between these two eyes is the same as the width of one eye. See that? So we'll take that measurement, mark it, and double check it. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll draw another loop or a rainbow for the top of the eye here. So do that right now. Oh, Sam. Oh, Alex, you guys are both late. I'm very disappointed in you, gentlemen. Just disappointed. Unreal. Can't believe it, Alex. I'm so disappointed. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a little slide down and then go the other way. Just like so. Draw our circle. Dark in the bottom of that circle. And then again, cover it up with an eyelid. Portions again, the width of one eye. Darken that, darken that. So now we have two eyes. going to add pupil, which is going to look like a dark circle. We're going to leave a little bit of catch light, as in light reflecting as if it's coming from the right. And that's just, catch light means just reflective light off of the pupil, off of the pupil and iris. Okay, just like so. And do the same thing on both eyes. Just draw a smaller circle inside the circle that you have. With a little white space to represent reflection. I'm not going too fast, am I, guys? Uh, I hope not. Okay. We're going to go into the eyes, this white space that's around here. This is going to be the iris. We're just going to put little hatch marks, little, little lines to represent the lens that is in control of the pupil opening and closing, like a camera, like a shutter. These hairs 
these filaments open and close, the amount of light that comes into the eyes. Okay. <clears throat> and no notice how we're not trying to go out to the sides just yet. We're gonna we're building out from here out. Okay. Once you have this information kind of down, what we're going to do is we're going to darken the eyelid a little bit, and we're going to add eyelashes. And eyelashes, you know, a lot of people want to do like, you know, these spider leg kind of things. What we're going to do is kind of change it so that we're going to start at the, the eyelid where the eyelid's meeting the eye, and we're going to kind of use our pencil and brush upwards like so and out okay kind of loop it push it and then release all right you guys see that ellery you look confused i'm sorry so i'm putting more pressure on the bottom where the eye, the line for the eyelid is, I'm pushing hard and then I'm releasing less pressure as I'm coming up this way. Does that make sense? I do the same thing on this eye here. Again, more pressure on that line and then releasing. As I go up. I'm gonna do the same thing, kind of on the bottom, but just reverse. Just a little less, smaller strokes, less strokes. Do eyebrows next. Eyebrows frame the eyes. We would all look really weird without eyebrows. Especially me, because I have such bushy caterpillars on top of my eyes. So again, kind of framing the eye. I've been told by my students that kind of, like, these are apparently very 90s eyebrows. So I need to make more, you know, 21st century eyebrows. <laughs> I did not realize that I was doing that. I don't know, but I've been called out uh, apparently that I I make eyebrows for women that are very um, 90s based, I guess. So, so we're gonna stretch these out and then have them fr again frame the face. I don't know. I guess. I've been teaching this stuff for so long that I get stuck in. Maybe the era when I learned how to do it. I don't know, who knows. I don't know, do those look like 21st century eyebrows? I don't know. I don't know this stuff. Yeah, 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 1920s for sure. <laughs> kind of like the roaring 20s, very Gatsby. I don't know, yeah, they look kind of like Gatsby, Gatsby eyebrows, I don't know. Okay, so we have eyebrows. I'm just using mostly value to describe them rather than individual hairs, because then you get to like really weird territory of like, you know, these gigantic 
thing. So we're just gonna use value for now. We're gonna create a nose bridge and come down. So it's just kind of an angled line and then come down. Now what we're going to do, guys, is we're gonna go and take the proportion of the middle of the face to the outside of the eye, right? To the outside of the eye. We're gonna take this proportion and we're going to scroll down to right about there. And that's going to be the end of our nose. So this measurement from the outside of the eye to the, the space between the two eyes, right there, right? We're gonna take that and we're gonna scroll down. We're just gonna take that measurement and come down to here. And I'm just gonna put a little notation right there. That's where my nose is gonna be, okay? So I'm gonna work down to like right here. Now here's the thing, the width of the nose, and she doesn't look like she has a huge nose, right? The width of the nose is gonna be from the inside of the eyes down, all right? See that? That is the width of your nose. As you get older, the, the three things, well, the two things that, well, I guess it's three things, that continually grow is your nose and your ears. So if you notice like really old guys are playing chess in the park, right? They might have extremely large earlobes and ears as well as a disproportionate nose because they never stop growing. It's just kind of weird. It's like, I wish I was continually getting taller, you know, but that's not gonna happen. My nose is gonna get bigger. My ears are gonna get droopier. That's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna look like Buddha for sure. Things to look forward to, you guys. Okay, so I know that I'm gonna take this measurement, kind of a little notation here. That's how wide my nose needs to be, right? How to build a nose looking straight at it. There's like a little circle right here, a little, it's like a little rubber ball, right? You have these two little smaller balls. We're gonna build off of that. We're gonna, we're gonna draw a circle. Think of a, a very small clown nose, not a big clown nose, but a small one. And then two littler balls, okay? That kind of overlap that first ball, right? It looks kind of weird, I know, it looks weird. This is, again, just a generic Canon nose, okay? It's not meant to look like anybody's nose in particular. This is just to give you kind of an idea of what, of what we're doing. Okay, so, so you're building an, a nose, right, just like so. So what's gonna happen? How do we combine the big central, central circle and the two smaller ones next to each, right? And how do we do that? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on the outside of this one here, right? Okay, we're gonna trace it. Now, here's, here's the cool part. We're gonna make a nostril. Okay, now pay attention, pay attention. We're gonna come in, come in like that, and then attach to the big circle. Okay, you see that? Down, stop, loop back, and then down, just like that, to make that nostril, to make a nostril, all right? That's oh, intense, it's intense. Oh. So I'm gonna do it on this side. So we're gonna come down here, gonna curve down, stop, loop back up, make the nostril, and then connect to the bigger circle. See that? And some of you might say, well, yeah, that, that's, that's cool for a generic note, but that's not any nose I've seen. Well, this is, again, just a primer for you guys just to see how you can build things. Looking at a person straight ahead, okay? So we're gonna go through, we'll erase slightly some of this information. I wanna keep some of that there, though, All right? Oh my gosh, it's a nose! Look at that, you see that cute little nose? So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna connect these two. 
Alright, we went a little bit far on that. No, 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 no. Okay. Keep all these kind of notes here for you. Now I'm gonna go back and kind of darken that, darken that, darken that. Just so you guys can see, there's one side of the nose. Get rid of these lines, these guidelines. Now, so now we have a kind of the beginning of a face, right? Eyes, eyebrows, nose, cool. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out our lips so that the person can talk. We're gonna take a measurement from the middle of each eye, drop it down. Now I know this part might not line up with everything that's going on in here because again, this is just a placeholder. This outline is just a placeholder, so don't worry. This is gonna be the outside of our lips. Our lips are gonna be right here. Not all the full parts of the lips, but just where they kind of end, okay? So we're going to see this curve that we have here for our nose. We're gonna mimic that. We're gonna go down just a smidge, just a smidge. We're gonna mimic that shape down here, right? A little cut, a little curve that matches the curve of the bottom of the nose. Okay? That central curve of the nose. We're gonna recreate that down here. Just a little bit further down. So make a little valley. And then we're gonna make two peaks on the top. One, two, have them curve out and have them taper. Okay, one, two, just like so. Now, depending on how thick you want to make your lips, if you want to make her have like you know, big, you know, Kourtney Kardashian lips, you know, with the, the whole bottle thing that she does to make her lips gigantic, but we're not gonna do that, okay? We're just gonna give her kind of a, an average little. So we're gonna kind of mimic that curve again, but not as severe. We're gonna come up here, and then we're gonna meet it and taper it with the top here, okay? So notice how they're not full all the way to the end. So it would look really weird, cartoony, and, and strange, and also disturbing, okay? So we have the top lip. Okay, now what's unique about the top lip is that when you look at it from a side, the, the angle, when you look at the side view of your own lips, they are diving in, meaning that they're not gonna be exposed to light. So we're gonna just value shade them because they're not getting hit by direct light. If you just look at yourself, you notice that your, your top lip is darker than your bottom lip. Your bottom lip kind of juts out and gets hit by light. So we're going to kind of frame, see this line that we've made here? We're gonna darken that line. We're gonna darken that line. And then we're going to create a bottom lip that doesn't necessarily connect with that top lip. It creates this illusion of space. And we're gonna do a little value shading at the bottom here. But this line, if you do it right, is going to fill in all that negative space. To make it look like this is actually flush. Again, this is just a primer. little darker shadows right here. We'll give her a little bit of an angle here on the end, dark angle. Right. Cool. Now, 
once you have these elements here, I'm going to kind of lightly erase the bottom here because her jawline is going to be a little bit different. Again, this is just kind of a placeholder. Okay. I'm going to give you some time to catch up. Now, we're just gonna give her a jawline. We're gonna go over here to this side. We're gonna give her more of a defined jawline, all right? Your chin, okay, is not necessarily gonna be right there underneath all of it. We're gonna actually drop, drop it down to here, almost to the edge of my paper, okay? And this is a woman, so we're not gonna give her a nice square jaw, okay? We're gonna give her more of a tapered and um, narrower chin area, right? We're gonna come over here, gonna give her a sharper jawline, but not too sharp, not squared off, right? Okay. Okay, we've been searching lines to kind of figure out my portions here. Yeah, there we go. some of the searching lines. Okay, you can see that. And then I'm gonna go over to the other side and do the same thing, kind of make sure I'm proportional the distance between the eyes and where that starts. Lips to the edge of the jaw too as well. Ears are a weird thing to draw. They're also much bigger than we think they are. Your ears start at your eyebrow. So I'm gonna start her ears and looking at them from this point of view, like straight on. They're gonna look a lot like this. They're gonna start here at the eyebrow, right? And they're gonna go all the way down to the nose. Yeah, ears are big. So we kind of come out this far and then come back in and then earlobe, right? Same thing over here, we're gonna come up, go out, back in, earlobe. All right? Now, we're not gonna get necessarily bogged down into the details of the ear. I will say this, you're gonna do a loop, a loop and then that little piece of cartilage that comes out right and some of you kids have like cartilage piercings which are really weird to me I digress and then we'll just do a, a generic kind of loop like this there are there's more information but because we're doing this basic drawing we're gonna be working on hair so a lot of this information on the ears are gonna get covered up okay The last thing before, you know, we start getting into some shading, we are gonna do the hairline, okay? Right now, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty girl with a shaved head, right? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna give her a hairline. Now, everybody has a different hairline. The one thing that we need to account for is forehead, okay? Everybody's got a forehead. Some of us have less forehead some of us have more forehead, that's okay. okay. None of us are Peyton Manning. That guy has a huge forehead, it's ginormous. You could, you could you know, rent out space for billboard information. It's so big. Viacom could pay him for billboard space on his forehead, but I digress. So the hairline is 
we're gonna we're gonna de kind of develop one here. It usually revolves around just framing the forehead. So we we're gonna give her this girl kind of a a little bit of a widow's peak maybe here. So this is the hairline, right? Comes down into the ear area, right? Even girls have faux sideburn looking things, right? Now, the thing is, I'm running out of room here in my, within my format. So what I'm gonna do is, usually the, what's gonna happen is, the hair is gonna go up higher than just the surface of your head, right? There's volume to hair, meaning that it isn't just pasted onto your forehead or to your skull, right? There's a volume attached to it. So we're gonna go above and beyond. I'm just gonna show you, I'm gonna put my hair, this is, this is my skull line here. My hair is gonna go up a little bit higher and I'm gonna go outside the format a little bit, okay? But I'm going to, what I do is this technique called chunking where you're not just drawing individual hair, but you're creating chunks of volume, all right? So give her kind of a part, and then that's how high I'm gonna go with her hair, okay? Give her like a little stray baby hair, right? And then up and then down, up and down. And I'm just chunking and making the illusion as if there's sections of hair, not just it plastered on her like paper, okay? So we're gonna give this girl some volume and it's probably gonna go off your page and that's okay. I'm off my page, but this is again, just a demo. But it, to build it, you just create the illusion of different chunks or pieces of volume of hair, right? So we're actually gonna cover up the ear here. Maybe she's tucked it behind here. That's really popular. Girls tuck the hair behind their ear, right? That whole motion. Okay. Guys too. <laughs> right? So this is chunking. Okay. Next step, and we're gonna do this just for a little bit, um, is how to make the hair look like hair, right? You have all these, all this information here. One thing that I wanna show you guys is how to shade these sections of hair, these chunks of hair that I've created. Right. So using this, this section right here as an example, what I'm gonna do is all the hair around the hairline, it's gonna be darker, right? And then when I come to like the end of that chunk, I'm gonna darken that too as well. And then between those two dark areas where I'm still showing some of the uh, lines, I'm just going to create the illusion that there's a highlight here just by leaving some white space, right? So I'm gonna do that here. I have another chunk. Let me define that chunk. And I'm going to, again, draw dark lines here, leaving so I can show those dark lines, right? 
And I'm also having my lines not just flat or straight, I'm actually having them curve to create the illusion that it's, you know, flowing hair. And then I'll connect them with lighter lines. Again, looking like highlights of where the hair is getting hit by light. See that? Isn't that cool? The one thing that I want you to understand is that hair, like anything, is going to reflect light and also absorb light. So um, the areas where you know you have light coming will be lighter. Areas that you know that are going to be uh, not be hit by light, it's going to be they're going to be dark. So make sure that again you're doing your due diligence and figuring out where your light source is and where it's not. So everything close to the hairline is going to be dark. Okay, meaning that close to the face, the darker it will be. So I'm just going through and darkening these values, darkening these chunks. And the areas over here are going to be much lighter. And I'll just use shading. This part I'm going to show and again the darker tones closer to the part. See that? This takes practice, okay? You're not going to get good at it right away, but it's good practice. It's fun. I'm just going through in whatever curls, whatever flows of the hair that I've made, I'm making sure that my lines, my shading lines, correspond with that. Does that make sense? So again, all the lines that are closest to the face, I'm going to make sure that they're pretty dark. So I'm also going to be doing a little bit of shading around the face. I'm going to take a break from uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the hair and just spend some time showing you guys how to shade the face too as well. So I'm just going to use uh, value shading here using cross hatching and some blending. Again, our light source is coming from the right, so our shadows, for the most part, for the face are gonna be on the left. So I'm gonna use shading, value shading here, 
to kind of describe in the nose, okay? We're going to darken the shading over the eyes. Smooth that out. Both eyes, actually. Shading in the middle, the little divot that we call. Actually, I can't recall what we call it. Again, using cross hatching, build up your values slowly. shade the inside of the nostrils. Forgot to do that. Shadow there. <clears throat> so here's the thing. What I need you guys to do uh, between now and the end, rest of the period. Go through, finish the hair up as best you can. I'm not going to keep you guys on Zoom this entire time um, as I do mine. But I think you have now kind of the, the building blocks for you guys to kind of go off on your own and do the hair. Finish up the hair. And then we're gonna do a three quarter view on Thursday. Oh, actually, yeah, for you guys, it'll be on Wednesday. We're doing three quarter view of the human face. Okay, but look for this video, it will be on my YouTube channel.